morning guys welcome or welcome back to my channel hi I'm Maria and this channel is all about beading I post beading tutorials and also content about my small handmade business where I sell my handmade beaded jewelry and today it's time for another tutorial and this is actually going to be a two-part tutorial because I want to explain to you how I make my French earrings and there are different types of French earrings so you have French earrings with bindings and then you also have French earrings which are fully beaded and today I want to show you how I make the ones with bindings and then the next part is going to be how I bead the whole upper part and then I add the fringe onto them. So first I want to show you some examples of fringe earrings that you can currently find in my shop. So I picked out these four. Um, I also have all of these. These are not finished yet and these will be listed with the next shop update. These four are available in my shop. Um, of course there are more, but I think these examples show very nicely how many different things you can do if you want to make fringe earrings. So we've got this one. This has a little more detailing, so you can see that there are two fringes added onto the finding. And then there's also a breast chain in the middle. Then I've got an example for my wind chime earrings. They have that name because these brass bars I added to the end of the fringe, so they basically jingle when they hit each other. Then a more simplistic design, I would say. These are my Odoti fringe earrings. I will make one of these today with you together. And yeah, it's basically a color gradient and then I added some brass cube beads at the end and then an even smaller fringe earring where I used check fire polish bead at the end. So you can see that I really prefer adding larger beads at the end of, of those fringes because I think it adds some more detail and I think it looks lovely but of course you can make fringe earrings with only one type of bead. That's really your decision. But for today, I'm going to show you how I make these. So we will make these today. And as you can see, the fringe is super lightweight and flowy. It's very flexible. And what you usually want with your fringe earrings is that they dangle, you know? You don't want a stiff fringe. So the first thing that I would advise for the right amount of dangle in your fringe earring is to use nylon thread. So I oftentimes hear that people are pretty much annoyed by nylon thread because it tangles easily, um, it ties knots, uh, many people see the need to condition it. I very rarely condition my nylon thread. Um, so yeah, it has many disadvantages in comparison to those fishing line type of threads that you can buy. But I usually don't use that type of thread because I don't like the feel and the stiffness um, that it brings. So I always use nylon thread. This is Nymo thread uh, in the size I think which is 0.15 millimeter in diameter and it's not conditioned so I only really condition it with wax if I need to and the only case that would be is when I use metal beads on a metal finding which is not the case for these so you pr you won't have any chafing in these and therefore I won't condition the thread so if you try to make these fringe earrings and in the end um, you feel like 
the dangle is not quite right, so your earring behaves differently from mine that I just showed you, then maybe you got the wrong thread or maybe the size is too large. Maybe the, the thread is too thick. So that's what I would check in the first place. Okay, so for now let me show you all the supplies that I will use for these earrings and then I will explain to you how I make these earrings. So as I said, we need nylon thread and it's unconditioned. Then next of course we need earring hooks as most of the time I use brass ones. Then my choice of finding are these. Then for the end of the fringe I use brass cube beads. These are 3 mm. You can make these earrings without any, any larger beads at the end or you can use check beads or whatever you have at hand. Then to achieve some kind of color gradient I usually use seven different colors of Miyuki Delica 11-0 beads. You can also use Miyuki Rounds or any other type of brand, whatever your preference is. My staple bead type is Miyuki Delica beads and that's why I'm going to use those today. So those are all the seven colors I will use today. Uh, those are of course different colors than the ones I just showed you, but the earring design will be the same. And then I also use some 15 ohm Yuki round beads, which I will add to the fringe following those brass cube beads. So first you will cut your thread and for these earrings I usually use about two and a half arm length of thread. So for this I usually hold my thread here at this height and then I just pull out my arm. So that's one arm length and I do it another time and then some more. That's two and a half arm length for me. It's probably a little more because I don't start at the shoulder. But yeah, don't ask me how many centimeters. This is how I do it and I'm sure you can figure it out too. So now that I've got my piece of thread, what I would do first is I will straighten it. And for this I just pull it in both directions, not directly pull it, but yeah, I just get the tangles out basically. And as I said before, I don't condition it. If you want to, you can, but I don't really see that it's necessary. Okay, so when you've done that a few times, you will tie a double knot. So we only need a small amount of tail thread because I only use it to tie knots at the end. So that's the start. So here we've got the finding and I use a size 10 beading needle. As you can see it's well used. <laughs> you pull 
pull your thread through a little bit so that you don't lose it right away. And then I will start this earring with one row of a two drop brick stitch. If these terms don't mean anything to you, I would advise you to watch my brick stitch tutorial. You don't necessarily need it, you can just beat along with me, but it will certainly be helpful for you. So I will link it up in the corner if you want to check it out. So the pattern for these earrings is super simple. The color gradient is basically done by using three beads of color one, one bead of color two, one bead of color one, one bead of color two, one bead of color one, and then three beads of color two. And then you will continue with all the other colors. And as you can see, the fringe is a little longer towards the middle. So I will increase the pattern at the start of the fringe and at the end of the fringe. So the further I go towards the middle, I will add one bead at the start and one bead at the end. So I don't need to use a pattern for these earrings because it's so simple that you can memorize it. Because I want to do a two drop brick stitch, I will need to take up four beads to make a tight stitch at the start. So I take up color one, color two, color one, color two. You push it down to your finding You go from the back to the front through all those four beads. You push them towards the end of the finding like this. And you want this to be tight. So you pull, you align them again by pushing your needle through them just a little bit and pulling out again. And then you go up through the two beads on the right hand side. By the way, because I am right-handed, of course, this may look differently if you're, if you're left-handed. Then you may want to start from the other side, but yeah. So you pull and then you've got something like this. And now we continue with the two drop brick stitch. So I take up color two. Color one, you push them down, I go from the back to the front through both these beads, I hold them and then I pull the thread. And you pull tight again. Then I take up color one, color two, push it down. And you place them right next to the other beads. And we do this until we have 11 beads sitting right next to each other on that finding. So again, color two, color one. And 
don't you pull tight? Then the next three groups of beads that follow will all be color one. So I now got the group of three beads of the color one next to each other and now we need to add another five times two of course and for this I take up color two, color one, push it down Then you take up color one, color two, color two, color one. Color one, color two, and then one last time. Color two, color one. So this is the base of our earring. So we've got the brick stitch done and now we will add the fringe. So this is going to be the front. I will add the fringe from, from the left hand side to the right hand side because I am right handed. So I will have my working thread always on the right hand side and the fringe on the left hand side. So I can tilt the earring in this direction and I can collect all the strands of beads in my left hand and then they won't be in the way when I pull my working thread. If you're left-handed you will probably want to work in the other direction so you will have this is your working hand with your needle and your working thread and so you will probably want to add the fringe from the right hand side to the left hand side so that you can tilt it in this direction so that you can collect all your beaded strands in your right hand and you can work with your left hand. You can try it out. Maybe then you... <laughs> I hope that you can understand what I mean and if you don't just um, try it out and you will probably see what I mean. Okay, so let's start with the fringe. So I will just place my earring on my beading mat and then I will pick up all the beads for the first strand. For the first one I will pick up 
two beads color two, one bead color three, one bead color two, one bead color three, one bead color two, three beads color three, one bead color four, one bead color three, one bead color four, one bead color three, and three beads color four. One bead color five, one bead color four, one bead color five, one bead color four, three beads color five. One bead color six, one bead color five, one bead color six, one bead color five, three beads color six, and then only one bead color seven. Then I will pick up a cube bead, three fifty nodes. I will hold those three fifty nodes between my fingers so that they won't be pushed into that huge brass cube bead. That won't be a problem if um, the sizes of your beads are more similar to each other, but you can see the whole of my cube bead is pretty large, so my 15 O's would disappear in there if I would push it along the thread. So I have a grip on my 15 O's, and then I just pull my thread until all the beads reach the end of the thread. Then I have my 3 15 O's down here. And then I will go through all those beads I just added. Make sure to not skip any bead because you will see it if you do. Because what will happen is that the thread that goes through the center of all the other beads will push out the one bead that you skipped. So the beads on your strand won't be in one line if you skip one. So now I went through all those beads. I will put my finger on the upper beads and I will just pull my thread through. The longer your thread is, the slower you want to do this just to see whether it tangles and forms knots. So if you pull too quickly, it could happen that your tangle gets too tight for you to untangle it if you're too quick. So do it, do it a little more slowly and you'll be fine. I hold those 15 O seed beads between my fingers, just the beads, not the thread, and then I pull my working thread so that I can make sure that both sides of my thread are pulled through and that there are not any loops in there. Then what I will do next, I will push my needle through the very first Miyuki Delica bead of that two drop brick stitch, not both beads, only the first one, and I go from front to the back so that it's basically diagonal. I place it on the mat and I pull again, only slightly, not too much. I turn over my earring, so this is now the back, and I will go through the next bead on the left hand side so that I place the thread bridge that I don't want to see when I wear my earrings on the back. So then you can test your dangle whether it's too stiff or too loose. You don't want a huge gap between your brick stitch and your fringe, so make sure that the dangle is right and that there's no, basically almost no gap visible, okay? And then you place it on your beading mat again, and then we repeat this. 
But as I said before, I will increase the pattern. So where I will add one bead to the top and one bead to the bottom. So now I will start by taking up three beads of color two. Then I do the pattern. One bead color three, one bead color two, one bead color three, one bead color two, three beads color three. One bead color four, one bead color three, one bead color four, one bead color three, three beads color four. One bead color five, one bead color four, one bead color five, one bead color four, three beads color five. One bead color six, one bead color five. One bead color six, one bead color five, three beads color six. Then one bead color seven and I increase by one by taking up one bead color six. Then I will add again the cube bead, three fifty nose. I will hold the three fifty no beads. And then I will push all those beads slowly towards the end of my working thread. Like this. Then you go back up to the cube bead and all those Miyuki Delica beads. Make sure not to skip any. Then I will hold the upper beads and I will pull my thread. Okay, so now we've got a loop. And we get rid of this loop by holding your final beads. So in my case those 15 0 beads. I hold only those beads. And then I will pull my thread. Next, I take up the earring, I push my needle through the very next Miyuki Delica bead from the front to the back, like this. And again you pull slowly, put down your earring, Hold again those 15 O's and pull. Then you turn over your earring and you go through the next bead where you want to add your strand of beads. Now you've got two strands and you've got the dangle. So one last time. <laughs> I will count the pattern for you. So we take up one bead of color one, three beads of color two, one bead color three, one bead color two, one bead color three, one bead color two, Three beads color three. One bead color four. One bead color three. One bead color four. One bead color three. Three beads color four. One bead color five. One bead color four. One bead color five. One bead color four. Three beads color five. One bead color six, one bead color five, one, one bead color six, one bead color five, and three beads color six. One bead color seven, one bead color six, and we add another one, which is one bead color seven. 
Then a Cupid, 350 nose. You hold the 350 nose and you push down all your beads. Then you go up all the way through the Pew beads and your Miyuki Delica beads. Put your finger on those upper beads again and you pull your thread. Hold those 50 nose because we've got a loop here and you pull your thread like this. You pick up your earring, you go through the very next Miyuki Delica bead, only one, not two, and you go from the front to the back. Put it down, hold those 50 nose, you pull again, you turn it over, and you go through the very next Miyuki Delica bead, like this, so that you have all those thread bridges on the back of your earring. You test your dangle, there's no huge gap between your brick stitch and your fringe, so everything's good. Okay, and now I would speed up the process and you can watch me bead that fringe. the middle and now I will keep on decreasing the pattern.
Okay, and the fringe is done. So now, I've got my working thread coming out of at the top of that last bead strand and now I will push it through both beads of that brick stitch to the back, like this. Now the only thing that we still need to do is tie knots. And for this I use the tail thread. So this is the tail thread. I will add a needle And then what I do now is I weave this thread in. So I go, so we've got the very first double knot we started with on this side and I will go up through that two drop brick stitch so that I can pull in that double knot into the Delica bead. You can also feel it how the knot moves into the bead so that it's hidden away. Then I will go from top to the bottom through the next two drop brick stitch on the left hand side. Then again through the next two beads on the left hand side from bottom to the top because I want to weave the thread in and I also want to have little thread bridges between the bead and the finding. You can see it here, there's a tiny little thread bridge. Okay, then again, this is the fourth group of beads. I go from top to the bottom through both beads, then from the bottom to the top through both beads. There we have our second thread bridge between bead and finding. From top to the bottom and from bottom to the top. So now we don't need that needle anymore. Pull it off. And what you see now is I have three additional thread bridges. Here's one, here's one, and here's one. And then I have the tail thread coming out of these beads. And what I want to do now is I want to use my tail, uh, my working thread, to tie knots with the help of these thread bridges, and I will pull the knots into my Delica beads. So let me show you. So usually there's enough space for the 10 size needle. So you usually don't need to switch it out to a size 12. So I will keep on working with this needle. So we're coming out of the very first two drop brick stitch. There. And then I will go, I will use the very first thread bridge I just created with my tail thread. I pull my thread through and I tie a knot. Just, just single knots, that's enough. And then I go through the next two drop brick stitch and I pull slowly and I pull until that knot is hidden away in those Miyuki Delica beads. Then I go up through the next two drop brick stitch
and then I take that second thread bridge I made with that tail thread like this so I have a little loop I go through that loop tie a knot and then I go back down through the fourth two drop brick stitch and I pull in that knot up again through the fifth two drop brick stitch and I have the third thread bridge here take that one it's a little loose because we, we only have that tail thread dangling here so pull it tight and hold it then tighten your knot and then you go back down through the six two drop break stitch and you pull in that knot and now we have the working thread coming out of the six two drop break stitch and the tail thread coming out of the seventh two drop break stitch and now it's nice and secure I will cut it so sometimes it happens that you don't cut your thread close enough to your earring and then you have those little ends sticking out and then this will disrupt the, the flow of your fringe so I can do it as an example for you now so that you can see what I mean so say you cut it like this not nearly close enough you have those ends sticking out and these are so short that you seriously you can't cut it with scissors because the thread is too fine and sometimes this will push out the beads at the front so if you I mean it's probably not really noticeable but you know as a beater you don't want to make these mistakes so as you can see there is a gap because the thread on the back is pushing against those beads and we don't want this so what I do then is I use my thread zap so I've already talked about this in my short beading supplies video but what this does it's got wire at the top maybe at the tip and it gets hot if you push that button over there and with this you can burn away plastic thread so very carefully you want to burn away those thread ends Don't burn yourself. That's it. And now you've got a nice and even fringe earring. And it's all flexible and smooth. So next we will add the earring hook. And there you have it. So I'm done with my pair of earrings. I really hope that you like these. If you make fringe earrings yourself, 
let me know what you do differently or um, what's new to you um, if there are any if there's anything that you would like to adjust about your technique um, yeah just comment down below I would be very grateful for all your feedback so let me put these on I really do like these a lot and I made quite quite many pairs of earrings before I got my French earrings right. Don't get frustrated if it doesn't work out the first time. Uh, French earrings really do need quite some practice I find and there may be quite some things that you will notice when you're done with your earring and that you don't like so just keep on trying. And if you have any questions, comment down below and I will try to help. So, my voice is leaving me. I'm still a little ill, so it's time for me to stop talking today. But, yeah. I really hope that you will drop by for the second part of my French earring tutorials. If you are interested in buying French earrings, please check out the link down below for my... Etsy shop you can also find all the links to my socials and if you plan to make a pair of fringe earrings for yourself or you may use this pattern I would love it if you would share it over on Instagram if that's possible and for this please use this hashtag so that I can see it or maybe tag me in your post. So that's it for today. If you liked this video please consider liking, commenting and or subscribing. And maybe you want to check out the second part of my French earring tutorial that will come out sometime in April. But I also upload studio vlogs on a regular basis, so maybe you want to check those out. And my voice is gone for today, so I'm off for now. Thank you so much and I will see you next time. Bye!